Joining me now is Naftali Bennett, former Prime Minister of Israel and former Chief of Staff for Benjamin Netanyahu. Honor to have you here, sir. So I want to ask you first off, what do you think Israel's response should be now? We got to do what America would have done if, uh, say, Cuba lobbed the 330 ballistic missiles, rocket uh, cruise missiles, and the UAVs towards Florida and New York. Uh, what America would do, we got to do. And essentially, it means that we need a decisive but clever, very accurate uh, response. Uh, otherwise, uh, Iran will understand that they can uh, get away with murder. Hmm. Uh, we're having a bit of trouble. Uh, no, there you are back. Good. Um, President Biden said this to Benjamin Netanyahu while trying to discourage him from seeking revenge against Iran. You got to win. Take the win. Do you agree with President Biden? No, I don't. Uh, it's not a win. Uh, it's a remarkable achievement, especially in Israel's uh, technology as a startup nation. So, yeah, we managed to thwart 330 cruise missiles, ballistic missiles, UAVs, drones coming from all around simultaneously. Uh, that I believe is the single uh, biggest achievement in the history of uh, air defense systems. So indeed, it's a remarkable achievement, but it's not a victory because they tried to hit us and they didn't incur any pain. So if someone's uh, punching you 330 times and, and you manage to, to block it, but you want to stop punching you, uh, you got to punch back. And uh, there has to be uh, pain inflicted and, and profound pain on the other side. I'm not talking about the Iranian people. I'm talking about the Iranian regime of uh, the Republic, uh, Islam the Republic Islamic uh, regime. So if you were to be advising Benjamin Netanyahu, how would you go about doing that? What would you want them to do? Would it be covert? Would it be overt? Uh, there's a plethora of uh, ways to do it, but uh, and I think it would be very wrong for me to uh, voice this uh, publicly. In fact, I think it's not a bad idea at all that uh, the Iranian regime is now all hunkered down and in a cloud of uh, uncertainty of how it will react. Uh, but if uh, we want to thrive in this region, uh, everyone needs to understand that the bully of the region, Iran, has to stop uh, sending out terror through its proxies or directly. And uh, I think a, a new era uh, can be ushered in, an era where Iran pays for its uh, mischief, pays for its terror. And ultimately, uh, we need to apply tremendous pressure on Iran, uh, on the regime. Uh, hopefully that it will collapse uh, within a few years. OK, so picking up on on your sense of it being potentially a new era, does that mean that a response that you would condone does not necessarily have to include bloodshed? And I ask that because Admiral James Savridis was on the show earlier and he said there could be a cyber attack, a crippling cyber attack. Would that go far enough for you to destabilize Iran in that way? Alex, what we need is for the Iranian leadership uh, to feel so much pain that next time they even imagine uh, attacking Israel either directly or through its proxies, they won't. That won't be achieved by words, uh, neither words in Jerusalem or in Washington. It will be achieved by actions and hopefully as broad coalition actions as possible. But I will say this. Um, Israel is certainly capable of uh, uh, taking uh, care of this, uh, this challenge on its own. Uh, we do appreciate as much uh, backing as possible, but we've never asked America to fight our fight or to send uh, soldiers to fight for us. We're perfectly uh, capable of doing it ourselves. The prospect, though, of Iranian regime change is that just theoretical? I mean, we've been talking about that prospect for years now. Talking isn't enough. Uh, you actually need to do stuff. But here, here's the situation. Think Soviet Union 1987. If we had been talking about the future of the Soviet Union in 1987, no one would have imagined that just uh, two years later, that rotten, corrupt uh, regime would collapse. The Iranian regime of the uh, Islamic Republic of Iran 
is corrupt, is uh, incompetent, is disconnected from its people, is despised by a vast majority of Iranians. Therefore, it's not sustainable. But it can go on for potentially 30 years or three years. It depends on international coalitions applying that pressure on it. Look, Iran is a superpower of terror, but a very um, mediocre uh, government itself. And ultimately, it will collapse. I think uh, the, the free world can do a lot of soft action. I'm not talking about kinetic action to uh, accelerate that collapse before they acquire nuclear weapons. I have one final question, sir. It's an important one because there are growing questions about the Israeli hostages held by Hamas. The IDF says Hamas is currently holding more than 100 people captive, but Hamas says it does not have 40 hostages that fit the criteria for the ceasefire deal that Israel wants. What's really happened here? Why hasn't Hamas provided any proof of life? because they didn't feel, feel enough pressure to do it. Um, look, Hamas is, a, is a simple, simply an evil terror organization. They, like a mafia, they don't understand anything soft. They only understand that if their own survival is at stake, and I'm talking about primarily Yichi Sanwar, if they feel the tanks are coming to Rafa, only then they'll say, okay, okay, we'll come to a deal. Uh, they're holding uh, over 100, over 110 Israeli hostages, of which a quarter of them have been already executed by them, which uh, I, I'm not hearing enough uh, public uproar around that. They don't want a deal because they feel that they can survive uh, even without a deal. If we begin uh, the process of taking Rafa, which is the last uh, holdout of the Hamas, the final uh, post that they're holding, and they see that their survival is at risk, and that's when a deal will happen. Former Israeli Prime Minister Naftali Bennett, it's uh, great to speak with you, sir. I hope to do so again soon. Thank you.